Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how we handle events and event forwarding from inner components to their parents using Svelte. So without further ado, let's just get started with this. So I have a very, very basic setup. We have a count variable, which is initially set to zero. We have our imported um, inner Svelte components and we are just displaying the count, which is currently again zero, and calling the inner components. That is all for our app.svelt. For our inner.svelt, we have our blank function, which is called increment counts, and a button with the onclick event for that increment count function. So what you see is when we click the button, uh, nothing happens. Now, how do we increment the counts without actually like, you know, how do we listen for some sort of function on this inner component? Well, how do we listen for this increment count is really what we should be asking. And to do that, we're going to be using events. So we are going to import the create event dispatcher from Svelte itself. So Svelte uh, includes a function called create event dispatcher which does exactly what it sounds like. So I'm going to call it dispatch and it's going to be set equal to the value of create event dispatcher. Now this dispatch is actually a function that now we can call whenever we need to dispatch events. So when we increment the counts, what we want to do is really we want to send an event that we can then listen to in our app.svelts. So in here we can do dispatch, which takes in two values. One of them is a type which is required, and this is just the event name. For example, I'm gonna call it foo, just, just as a quick demonstration. And that is it, that's all we need. We don't have to pass in the second um, parameter, which is data that we can send along with it. And I'll show you how to use that in a second, but for now, we're just gonna dispatch this foo event. Now you may be like, okay, how do we handle the foo event? Well, we can just do on semicolon foo, and you can see we're getting IntelliSense already and it's a custom events. So we can do on foo, right? And we can run this custom events. For example, const uh, on click, I'm gonna call it. And then here we have access to this E, which is the events. And I'm just gonna console.log foo or button clicked. And we're gonna do what we wanna do of just counts plus plus. We're gonna increment the counts when this is called. So on click, we're going to run this um, on click function, right? And what you'll see is now when we click this, we get button clicked and our count is going up. So just like that, we've already sent a function um, handler from an inner component to an outer component just like that. It was really simple, really easy to do. Now let's say we want to also pass along data. Like, let's say we want to pass along a timestamp or something like that. Or we want to have a value like let last clicks and just do uh, zero, right? And we want to show the last time someone clicked the button, right? We can do last, last clicked is equal to last clicked. And I'm going to set this equal to null by default. And what we're going to do is we're going to just conditionally render this. So if you forgot how to do conditional rendering, we do hashtag if, and then our condition. So we're gonna do last clicked. We're gonna render this component, right? And then to end it, we just do if, like so. So if we actually clicked it, then we would render that. Now again, how do we like show the date when we click this? Well, we can pass along data. And that's where this E is gonna come in. Over here in our dispatch event, I told you there was a second parameter we can use. The first one, if you can see, is of type foo, and the detail parameter is of type any. And this is an object we can pass in, and we can do something like uh, time and pass it equal to dates, dates dot now, which will just get the current time. So now this foo event has an object called detail with a parameter of time. So how do we get access to that? Well, to show you what else comes with this, I'm going to just console.log this E, which is the event we're getting from this foo event. So when we console.log E on click, we get button clicked, right? 
and we get custom events. And you can see in here, we get values like is trusted, um, stuff like default was prevented, stuff like that. And one of the things we can do is we also get timestamp, a type, and a detail. And here is where we can pass in values. For example, here's our detail dot time value that we were looking for. So we can just do something like this. We can do last clicked is equal to e dot detail dot time. And this will now have it so we can update our time when we click the button. And I'm just going to get rid of this console.log, clean this up a little bit, and that should now work. So when we click the button, uh, our foo event, which remember, it's called foo because we called it foo right here. If we want to actually call it something useful, like on increment, right? Now this won't work. We need this to be called increment, right? And now when we rerun this, you'll see, um, sorry, there we go. You'll see we can click it, right? Actually, we can't click it because I didn't save. <laughs> there we go. So we can click it, right? And we get one, two, three, and you can see this date's going up whenever we click it, right? So we have now been able to pass data from an inner component to an outer component. Now this is only passing data from one component to its parents. How would we go about passing this to say another component? Like say we have another component in between these two. So to test that, I'm gonna create a middle dots felts, right? So this is now where things might get a little messy, you may think. Um, so say we have in here, I'm going to just get rid of this last clicked, right? I'm going to get rid of this because I kind of want to make this as clean as possible. There we go. So we have just the counts going up. And in here, we're not going to pass in a date. There we go. So how do we increment this and get it to the middle component? Like let's say the middle component, right, is now actually here. We're going to import the middle component instead of the inner one. And in here, we're going to render the middle one. And we still want to listen for this on click event, right? We still want to be able to do on increment. So we do on increment and we pass in the name of our on click function, right? So how do we get this to work? Well, you may have already tried doing something like this where we have a script. We can set the language to TypeScript. And then we can just kind of repeat the process we did before, where we import the create event dispatcher from Svelte. And then we have to do const dispatch is equal to create event dispatcher. And then we have to create this event dispatch function, like const um, for word events, right? is equal to, and then we just like forward this entire event, including the event variable um, from our middle one. So for example, we would import inner from dot slash inner. And in here, when we have this inner, right, we can then listen for the on increment event right here and call this forward event function. So we can call forward events right here. And this works, right? So we have like console.log um, e dot type. So we could do something like that. And then we just call dispatch um, and the type. So we do e dot type and then e dot detail, right? So we're just forwarding the event. We're just saying, hey, get the type which in this case is increment, it'll just be increment here, and just forward it. So now we're doing on increment, but up here as well. So if we run this, uh, what you'll see is it still works, right? We're console.logging increment, we're incrementing it. We have now three components. The inner component is dispatching the events, the outer component or the middle components receiving it and passing along the type as low as the details. You can see we don't pass any details in here. But if we do, we can still do like our time example where we have dates dot now. It, it would still, you know, we could still pass these along. Um, for example, if I console.log e dot detail, right? We would expect to get time in here. 
So we can click, we get increment, and then we get our time value. So we, we can still do this, right? But if we had to have, say, four or five components deep, this is really, really getting out of control. So how do we do this better? Well, we can actually get rid of all of this code regarding the dispatch event, as well as the event dispatcher. And instead, we can do on increments just like this, where we don't pass in a callback function. Now, what will happen here is when we fire off this event, the increment event, the Svelte compiler will know to create an event handler that basically forwards the event to any parent components. If you don't pass in a callback function, it'll do that for us. So now this will work just like before. And you can see, we get our time, we can increment the value, but the middle component is only like four lines of code now instead of like 10. So this is a lot simpler, a lot better, and it's how we can forward events uh, using Svelte. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, leave your feedback down below if you have any suggestions. Uh, feel free to join the Discord server that we just created. Um, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.